welcome to my farm here in Kitengela. Hapa ndiyo tunafanya ukulima inaitwa urban farming we farm in town area so it means we farm in small sections and we try to create awareness through our youtube channel farm on fire to help other people see the possibilities of farming in the urban areas One of the ventures that we have in our farm is mushroom farming and I'm going to take you through step by step on how to prepare and be, make mushroom farming profitable for you as well. It's an ideal crop for urban farmers and that's why I really was attracted to it. There was someone in church who was offering the training. I paid, I attended and I came and built my own mushroom farm with my own two hands and my kids. It's something I enjoy doing because mushrooms are are highly nutritious but also it's a high value crop which means you pack a very small produce and you can be able to fetch good money from it the other thing is that i've been able to find a way to value add so that it's not as sensitive and perishable because sometimes you might have a challenge of a market but i've been able to increase the shelf life of the produce up to six months it has been good because it considers that I don't have a lot of space, not compared to people in Muranga or Nyeri who have acres and acres of land. I am farming in a plot area and mushroom is ideal for me. Number two, mushroom does not grow on soil. It's soilless agriculture. It's uh, farming in the future, which means when we are hearing a lot of people complaining that it takes so much energy, so much water to feed a cow for it to give you beef as a source of protein. Mushroom can still give you so much protein, less cholesterol, yet it is using very little resources. So I believe that mushroom to be the future crop to look up to for protein source. This is the fruiting house. It should be very well ventilated and cool. So you have to have a lot of moisture because mushrooms have high, high moisture content. It's also very good because you can see the size, I call it the size of a latrine, which means you can still produce so much mushrooms. If you have a spare bedroom, if you have a spare shelf in your kitchen, you can still be a mushroom farmer. So you take the mushroom, um, the wheat straw, you cut it into small pieces, put it in the drums over there, and then you boil it. After you, bo you boil it to sanitize, it means you are killing completely competing bacteria and competing fungus. Remember mushroom is a fungus, it's not a plant. It doesn't have the roots, you know, the, the crops, um, the leaves, the roots and the stems as a normal plant would have. So because of this, it usually has different characteristics different from a plant, but it has other competing fungus that can come. So you only want the seed that you've put in the substrate to be present, to be productive. And so you kill the others by boiling at two, for two hours in very high heat. Once you have boiled it, then you put it in the bags and then you put it in an incubation house. As the word incubation suggests, is that you put it in somewhere where it's experiencing heat. When the seed starts colonizing now the wheat straw or the grass that you've put, it goes turning white and eventually at the end, then you know that it is ready for fruiting. Upon this stage is when we transfer it into the fruiting house. A characteristic of, of fruiting house is that it has to have cooler temperature than the incubation house. That's why you find an incubation is either mud or stone walled, while an incubation house is metal. Yes, and then after you put them in the fruiting house, spray water for a week and you should start harvesting immediately. This whole process takes about three months. So you have about four weeks in the, in the incubation house and then the fruiting process takes six weeks to eight weeks. So about eight, um, so about three months, you should be able to have a crop and your next crop coming up. So. It's a three month cycle kind of crop. Yes. Yes. Welcome inside. Why you find that um, after it rains, mushrooms keeps popping up, especially in the forest, 
is because of that moisture and then it dries so you have to make sure that you keep spraying water to your mushrooms so that they keep being triggered to grow another benefit of mushrooms is that they mostly rely on waste materials hardly will you go to a shop to buy new products or invest a lot of high capital to start it it's something that can be started with whatever waste materials you have you you need a substrate which is kind of the farm where they will grow and that can be waste material from maize from sugarcane from wheat and even from any other source like grass like that is dry so that is one other benefit that it's not high capital venture that anyone can go into even for young people who are feeling they have higher they have not been able to find jobs and high unemployment rates are in kenya they can go into mushroom farming because they don't need to be told you need to get a tractor which will cost you this much you need to get land you can start mushroom farming which means that you just have to look for local resources that are near you that can form the substrate of the mushroom